and welcome to this tutorial about Microsoft Azure service endpoint versus private endpoint. Many time people have confusion between these two services. In this tutorial, you will learn all the nitty gritties of these two services. How are they different from each other with live examples. My name is Navneet Kumar. I am a Microsoft certified trainer and the founder of TrainCrest Technologies. Let's talk about the Azure Virtual Network Service Endpoints first of all. You have many cloud services to use in Azure. For instance, Microsoft Entra ID, Azure Storage, Azure SQL, Web Apps, Service Buses, Event Hubs, Automation Accounts, and many more services like this. To access these cloud services, you connect through the public endpoints of these services over the internet. Your traffic from your network is routed or from the client is routed to these cloud services over the internet. If I want to optimize this route and improve the performance of this communication from the client to the service, then I can use the service endpoint. Service endpoint is nothing but a network interface that provides a connectivity to the Azure cloud services over the Microsoft's backbone network. Remember, it is still a public connection. It is still a public uh, uh, route, but actually this is routed using the Microsoft's backbone network. So it is just optimized to improve the performance. What you get with this, you get enhanced security you get improved performance because the uh, traffic has been optimized using Microsoft's underlying backbone network to the cloud service. It also saves the cost on the data egress because this time your traffic is going through the backbone network of Microsoft. This is the service endpoint. You will have to enable the service endpoint on your virtual network subnets to connect to the Azure cloud services. You also will have to configure these cloud services rather connecting them publicly. Uh, you will connect them through uh, Microsoft's backbone network through these service endpoints. So let us have a look into a demonstration where I will show you connecting to a Azure storage account from a server in a virtual network through the service endpoint for the optimized performance. To do this, I have created a storage account. This storage account, if I show you, is this storage account with the networking configured as the public endpoint as of now. When it is public endpoint, then this storage account will be connected from any network. As you see the setting, public internet access, public network access, and enabled from all networks. In this case, there will be a problem with the performance and the reliability. If my clients are in the virtual network, then I can optimize this connection. So what I can do is I can go to this enable from the selected virtual networks and then I can pick a particular virtual network. So I can add that virtual network here. So by going to this add existing virtual network, I will choose the virtual network for an instance dev bnet or any virtual network that I have and a particular subnet from that virtual network. I have this test vnet with the app subnet also over here but you see the endpoint status is disabled. For that I will go to my virtual network and enable the service endpoint on the corresponding virtual network subnets. I'll go to the VNet. Let me just save this configuration. And now I will jump to the virtual network. And in this test virtual network, I will select the subnet where my server is. This is app subnet. 
and I will scroll down on the subnet to the service endpoint and I will enable it for a particular cloud service. This time I'm using Microsoft storage account. So you can choose these services from here and then click on save. This setting will apply and will take few minutes to open this service endpoint to leverage the Microsoft's backbone network for the optimized performance. But you must have observed that from the storage account, the setting that is configured, it is still the public network. So if I take you back to the networking, here if I go to this networking, you will notice that this is public network access and enable from selected virtual networks and the IP addresses. But if I do not want public network access, then I will go with disabled. That I will discuss in private endpoints. First, let's see that how this traffic has been optimized from the virtual machines network to the storage account. For this, I have created a file share on this storage account. This file share is corp docs. I will open this corp docs file share and I will try to connect to this. I will choose a drive letter that I want to use and then will generate a script for Windows machine. You can use Linux or Mac. Now I will copy this script from here and I will switch to my server, which is a virtual machine. So this is a Windows virtual machine I have. If I go to the connect via Bastion, and do the RDP to this server. Now I will run that PowerShell script in the IAC. I will paste that code here. In that script, the first line you will notice here is about testing a connection. Let me go to the storage account and take that script. File shares. Corp docs connect the drive letter, whatever the drive letter you need. Show the script, copy it to the clipboard, take the script to the system. You will see the command is used to do the TCP uh, port connectivity for port 445 to check the connectivity with that port. And on this machine, because it has default internet outbound connectivity, so it can connect to that uh, uh, port 445 and it can let me connect to this storage account over this network. Let me block this connectivity to the internet. So I go to the network interface and I will modify the uh, NSG of this uh, NIC. Let me just go to the NSG instead of uh, uh, taking you through this uh, NIC. Otherwise, you will see on this NIC, there is uh, uh, one NSG associated, which is this app server one NSG, the NIC level NSG. There is a default outbound rule, which says that allow internet outbound. That is the reason that I'm able to connect to that port and on that public IP, the remote address. And if I hit this script, then it will map this drive on this system. So the script will run and it is mapped. I will be accessing the storage efficiently in a optimized way. This is how the uh, directory or this uh, file share can be mounted. Now, what I'm gonna do is to test this 
public network connectivity i am going to add the rule over here and to the destination which is my uh, internet gateway so it is going to be a uh, service tag internet and i will go with any port so any to any and i am going to create a rule to deny so i will disable internet outbound connectivity using this deny rule so there is no internet outbound on the server and this time you will notice that on the server if i hit this command it will fail to connect to the storage account service and i will not be able to mount those drives that i mounted earlier so i will disconnect my drives from here the drives have been disconnected and this will fail to connect this time and so my script will also fail so this is because it is false this time so if i will try to mount this so you see it is the public network it is trying to connect with and because uh, outbound internet connectivity is disabled so i will not be able to connect to the service endpoint through the service endpoint to the storage account Suppose this is the situation that I want to connect to the storage account privately, not through the Azure Backbone network, but through my virtual network. Then I can use Azure Private Link. Private Link is actually used to connect through the private endpoint. So what private endpoint is, let's have a look into this. So right now, the solution that I provided was through the service endpoint and it was through the optimized route connecting to storage account. But in private endpoint, what happens is that within my virtual network, I will add a network interface, which will privately connect to the storage account using the virtual network itself. So you can consider like the storage account service is running within your VNet. Though it is a cloud service, but it is running within your VNet. You can consider it like that. For an instance, I have web applications or Cosmos DB or Event Hub, service buses, such cloud services I have and I want to connect them through the private connection, through the virtual network traffic of my virtual network in cloud, then I can leverage this private endpoint. So to show you this scenario, I have blocked that internet connectivity and there is no public connectivity or public network this time. To connect to the storage so now I can use the private endpoints all I need to do is I need to go to my storage account once again and this time in the storage account I will change this configuration to disable the public endpoints when the storage account is no longer a public endpoint then how will we able to connect to that so I'm going to save this setting. It is completely a private endpoint. Now to establish a connectivity with this, I need to add a network interface. So this is going to be my private endpoint connection that I will create. Now then on the cloud service, that connection can be approved or rejected. I will give it a friendly name. This will be test NIC and okay, test two NIC and East US is the region then the resource so this is the target subservice that i want to use file service it will ask for the virtual network in which virtual network and the subnet you want to introduce it so i will choose my subnet over here which is app subnet where my app servers are running i will dynamically allocate the ip to this nick or i can create a static ip for this nick i can define the application security groups for additional configuration and then I will go with DNS, a private DNS zone will be required for the name resolution. Otherwise you will have to connect to this storage account service, this file service using the private IP allocated on the NIC that we have defined in this previous step. Now if you already have the private DNS zone registered with that, you can leverage it. We will provide the tag for this, for an instance it is project.
testing and you will click on review and create finally you create this private endpoint by enabling this private endpoint a nick will be added to this storage account service and this storage account service will be added to your virtual network unlike the service endpoint which uses the microsoft's backbone network to optimize the routing to connect to these storage services the private endpoint will use the virtual network to connect to this storage account so this time the storage account file service will be having a private ip address through which we will connect earlier in that case of service endpoint you noticed that we tried to connect to that public ip and this failed to connect to that public ip because uh, the internet outbound is disabled through the nsg there is no internet outbound connectivity on this server so this server is completely isolated having no internet inbound or outbound this time and we will notice that we will still be able to connect to the storage service this time because the ip will be the private ip this time for the storage account service it will take some time to get it registered i can check it on my virtual network that whether the private endpoint has been added or not so i'll go to my vnet which is test vnet in this case i will go to the private endpoints to check last time we used the service endpoints so this was for microsoft dot storage service whereas this time i am using private endpoint this test 2 has been added and private endpoint network policy is disabled i also can approve or reject this connection of this private endpoint on my storage account so i have the option so from the cloud service i can decide that whether i want this private endpoint to be connected or not from a particular network so if i take you to the networking and take you to that private endpoint there will be the options to choose a particular connection and approve or reject that so this is approved by default as you see the connection state is approved that means if this deployment is completed and my server will try to connect to this so this time if i will do this test connection to this uh, endpoint this endpoint will be using a private ip instead of using this public ip which was 52.30 uh, 239 last time so if i run that it has obtained that 172.30.0.5 from that app subnet the next available ip has been allocated to this endpoint to this cloud service now i will run this script to map this drive let's say t drive or whatever the drive you want to map on your system so you will define that and then you will hit enter okay the uh, drive t was already there i did it through the service endpoint connectivity so let me use it with u the next available drive letter and you will see i am connected to the storage account this file share has been mounted on my server and this has been mounted internally through the virtual network connections so this is the difference between the service endpoint and the private endpoint in a nutshell the service endpoint is not ensuring the private connectivity to your uh, uh, storage account or the other cloud services that support the service endpoint it is through the public uh, network but it is optimized uh, routing through the uh, microsoft's backbone network whereas in the private endpoint this connectivity is completely private uh, through the virtual network of the tenants i hope this tutorial was informative to you and if in case you have any doubt or questions please do let me know in the comment section please subscribe my channel for more videos like this thank you